Hi, sweet friends. Welcome back. Today I am sharing a beautiful Thanksgiving tablescape idea. I'll also be sharing a adorable, yummy charcuterie board that you can enjoy before, during, and after your Thanksgiving festivities. If you're looking forward to today's video, I'd appreciate a big thumbs up. And if you are new, hi, my name is Amy. I'm glad you're stopping by. I hope that you enjoy what you see and maybe we consider subscribing before you go. All right, friends, well, let's go ahead and jump into today's video. I hope you do enjoy. To begin today's Thanksgiving tablescape, I'll first add this beautiful table runner that says thankful on each end. I love the subtle stripes and tassels on each corner, plus it is a lighter color, so it really pops off the dark surface of our table. To create the centerpiece, I'm adding four of these drapey stems that have a slight hint of leaves beginning to change color at their tips. Starting at the center of the table, I'll add the stems facing towards the center, making sure to hide the stem by crisscrossing the ends under the opposite greenery. To each end, I'll add one more greenery stem, making sure to distribute more of the greenery towards the middle, making it more lush and full, with less greenery trailing to the ends. This centerpiece that I'm sharing today is one that will stay in place during your Thanksgiving meal. However, if you prefer a family style meal with your food on the table, you could still use this idea, but just on a smaller scale, on a tray, dough bowl, or charcuterie board that can be removed before serving your meal. Next to the center of the greenery, I'm adding two risers of sorts. This is a canister that I'm just turning upside down, and the other is a wooden bowl. These will give a boost or some height to a decor piece that we'll add a little bit later. Next, I'm coming in with these gorgeous gold cast iron candlestick holders that I got from Kirkland's. I'll do my best to link them as well as any other decor pieces that I'm able to link down in the description box just in case you're interested in picking up any of these items for your Thanksgiving tables. You'll see that I try to nestle the candlesticks among the greenery so that it looks like one cohesive centerpiece. I'll be adding three to each side. Next, it's time to add individual picks to add interest and fullness to the centerpiece. I'm using these unique burnt orange organic looking stems that I was able to pull from my surrounding fall arrangements to complement and enhance the color scheme that I'm going for. When adding individual picks together, an important tip is to take time intermixing the two pieces. This will give the centerpiece a more realistic, natural appearance rather than just layers of stems stacked together without connection. Also, to make your individual picks stretch a little bit further, don't be afraid to remove the colored ends. That way, the color can then be placed sporadically amongst the greenery so that the trailing ends have a little less color impact than in the center. Now I'm going to add a handful of these brown hops that will add yet another color variation and more texture to the arrangement. Plus they will connect the table runner to the centerpiece. Since the hops are very similar to the embroidery that is found on each end of the table runner. What table arrangement is complete without adding some type of fall leaves? I'm adding these lighter beige maple leaves. I think that it will lighten up the dark arrangement, which in turn will add another contrasting element. By scattering them throughout, it will also create a bit of movement for your eye to follow as you look at the centerpiece as a whole. Now it's time to add in the focal point with these two adorable copper turkeys. Now they are the exact same figurine, so by adding them at various heights and also facing them towards each other, it kind of tricks the eye into thinking they're a little bit different when in fact they are the exact same. 
As I step back and look at the space as a whole, over here on our buffet, I have this flower arrangement of florals, and I kind of want to connect the two spaces. And in order to do this, I'm just going to place a few of those same cream flower stems into the centerpiece. Moving right along, I love the soft, cozy glow and ambient light that candles give to a tablescape. However, I don't want to have to worry about the fear of a real flame, so I'm going to be using these beautiful wax taper candles that I found from Amazon. They are battery powered and can be turned on and off by remote. All you have to do is unscrew the bottom, add two batteries, which all of the batteries were supplied, which I thought was an added perk. Reattach the bottom screw, push the black button, and you're all set. You can turn them on and off by the remote. It has two visual options, a flickering candle light and a steady flame look. It can also be set up on a timer for four to eight hours. As I'm setting up the candles, you may notice that this is the second time that I'm repeating that burnt orange color in the table arrangement. And you'll actually see a third time coming up a little bit later. Repeating the same color within your tablescape at least three times is a trick that many designers use to get a perfectly cohesive look every time. Now I'm coming in with these gorgeous ribbed amber glass votives, six of them in all. I love the reflective property that the glass gives, and it also brings in another light source at a different level within the tablescape. Now it's time to finally set up the individual place settings. And if you've been around for a while, you know that I'm all about layering. So first I'm coming in with these beautiful woven placemats that are going to add lots and lots of texture. Then on top of that, I'm adding a faux leather charger that coordinates with all of the browns, coppers, and amber glass items that are going on in the centerpiece. As far as the dinnerware goes, I like to mix and match, and for special occasions, I like to bring out our china. I'm adding only the dinner plate from the set, then coordinating it with this wheat edge salad plate, which you might notice this is the third time I've incorporated and repeated that wheat or hops design element. Since the tablescape and dinnerware are beautiful and elegant, I want to bring in a more casual feel with a napkin and plate decor. Here I'm repeating that burnt orange color for a third time in this soft gauzy fabric napkin. I like the less fussy appearance by casually tying them in a knot and laying them to the side of the salad plate. Then topping each plate with the word blessing or thankful in a copper-like finish that relates back to the turkeys, which will complete the look.
for our silverware, I'm using the copper set that I picked up from Hobby Lobby last year. And I just love the, that the handle has that hammered look. Also, if you're wanting even more tablescape ideas, I can link last year's Thanksgiving tablescape, as well as my decorate for fall in our dining room. I shared a tablescape idea in that video. So those will be linked down in the description box and here at the end of today's video if you'd like to check them out. As we are finishing up the tablescape, I'm just adding the final touch, which is these amber glass goblets and a marble coaster to each of the six place settings. Now that the tablescape is all finished up, don't click out just yet. I want to share with you a cute little charcuterie board that you can put together and enjoy with your friends and family during your Thanksgiving festivities. So let's go ahead and head into the kitchen and get started. So here is a quick look at all the yummy food items I'll be placing on our Thanksgiving charcuterie board. I'm using this large round one, which I got from Walmart. And if you have an even larger one, that would even be better. I like to combine meats and cheeses, savory and sweet items, as well as crackers. I also like to choose different colors as well. So first I'm going to use some of these pita crackers. We have some honey roasted almonds. We also have some yummy cranberries, some fresh grapes. We also have a couple packages of hard salami and I have two different cheeses, the pepper jack, as well as some mild cheddar. I also have one pear and then some mini semi-sweet chocolate chips. Okay, so now we can move on and do some food prep. We'll cut up some of the food items, slice the cheese, and then we'll get it all assembled and see how it turns out. Come to the water where you will find peace. Take a step into the river Get down on your knees Come to the mountain While taking in the view You will find the life is At the point of no return You pick up the pieces And you let the bridges burn So come to the water You're sailing with the breeze Take a step into the river Where you will find peace Where you go through the storm Now all that is left to do is make the little turkey come alive. I'll make and add the beak and legs made from cheese and the two chocolate chip eyes. 
What is great about a cheese platter is it can stay out at room temperature for a couple of hours and it's a perfect way to keep guests satisfied while waiting for Thanksgiving dinner. It's super easy as you can see and there is zero cooking involved which really comes in handy when there's a ton of different food cooking on the stove and in the oven. sweet friends. Well, that wraps up today's video. I hope that you enjoyed it and maybe got some new ideas for decorating your tablescapes this year. You'll have to let me know if you're going to try that charcuterie board. I thought it turned out so cute. And because I'm putting this out early for you all, me and my husband and family are going to enjoy it this weekend by celebrating my hubby's birthday. We're going to have a nice meal and also eat that nice charcuterie board. So I hope that you did enjoy it. If you did, go ahead, give me a big thumbs up. Definitely, if you enjoyed what you saw today and haven't already, I hope you would consider subscribing. I would love to have you back. As always, let's go ahead and end our time together by going to God's Word. Today, I'll be reading from Psalm 107, verses 8 and 9. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for men. For he satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with good things. I thank you again for joining me and for all of your sweet comments and support. I'm so thankful for each and every one of you. I hope you have a fantastic Thanksgiving surrounded by friends and family and abundance of love. So I hope to see you back next time when I kick off my Christmas decorating series. Take care and God bless friends. Bye.